Hey guys, I'm April from Giggle Glitter Graphics and today I am coffee dyeing some paper but I'm using stencils to put patterns on it. I'll probably coffee dye some regular pages as well but for now this is going to be the focus of the video. So I'm using Amazon Basics copy paper. It is a 20 pound copy paper. It's fairly thin. It's not the thinnest paper probably you can get but I like the weight of it and then once the coffee dye, the water kind of saturates it, it does feel just a little thicker. It's fairly inexpensive so and uh, very loud. <laughs> And I've got my pack of stencils here. I am, I've got a bunch of small ones in here, but I'm mostly going to be using this big, the big ones. These are about the same size as a sheet of paper. So I like to use these for this technique. I also have a little spray bottle. You can use a bigger spray bottle that's left over from something. I have a pack of these to use to mix paints in and things like that. Uh, I'll also link these down below, but I actually recommend using a larger bottle. If you have something left from uh, hair care products or something like that, then I recommend using a larger bottle so you don't have to refill it as often, but this works fine. So I'm going to use this little spritz bottle. I have some gloves so I don't stain my fingernails with the coffee dye and I'm using a Maxwell house instant coffee. You can use any instant coffee. It really doesn't matter. This is just what I have on hand. I also have a, this is a little bigger than a nine by 13 dish. I like it because it has curved sides. You can use any pan that you can fit a sheet of paper in. I have, I have a measuring cup. You can put the water straight into your pan. I know we all like ratios. We all like to know the measurements though. There's no exact measurements for this project. Um, I'm using a measuring cup today just so I can tell you how much water and coffee I'm using. Same vein, I got a tablespoon. So we'll do that. And I have a rubber spatula to stir and kind of like nudge the paper around. Um, it helps get it up out of the pan without it tearing as much. Sometimes it tears, I don't worry about it. So rubber spatula, you can use a spoon or something to stir. I'm going to start by filling my pan with warm water, hot to warm water from the tap. It just needs to be warm enough to dissolve the coffee. It doesn't have to be super hot. Uh, just tap water is fine. That is four cups. I'm going to do another four for a total of eight cups to start out. And here's our second batch of water. So this is a total of eight cups. You might ask why I'm using a pan if I'm obviously using a spray bottle. And that's because one, I'm just gonna dunk my bottle in there to kind of fill it up. And two, I wanna coffee dye full sheets of paper as well as do the stencils. So there's no reason to mix this all up and then not go all the way. I am totally out of coffee dyed paper and I have been convinced to perhaps make journals to sell. So I am going to dye up a bunch today and I figured I would just film my stencil dyeing process. So I'm going to start off with, I think two tablespoons of coffee. Here we go. There is no, the more coffee you have, obviously the darker your coffee will be. I'm going to start off kind of light. I generally start off light, dye a few things, and then add more water and coffee as I is needed and progressively let the mix get darker and darker and darker until I've got some crazy dark coffee stained paper. And then I just have a variety to play with instead of sticking with just super light or that kind of thing. So I'm going to stir this until the coffee has mostly dissolved. I'm not worried about it being fully dissolved. In fact, if there are some pieces down in there and you do put paper in on top of it, sometimes you get some cool little speckly patterns and that can be quite nice to look at. So got this fairly mixed well, and I'm going to pop my gloves on. I have a towel down on my surface so I don't get messy. And I have a plastic tablecloth down underneath that to protect my table. Let me just get my gloves on. I can link similar gloves down below. I love these for crafting. They are not super eco-friendly, but they do a really good job and they hold up well when doing craft projects. I do save the gloves and reuse them as many times as possible until they get holes in them or they've just become too dirty with paint or whatever to, and they're all stiff. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna put my coffee and my tools to the side. And I'm going to fill up my spray bottle. Now you could definitely just spray right onto paper with this. That would work just fine. 
Um, I should have taken my paper out of the package before I... <laughs> Let me grab a little... All right, I've got a chunk of paper here. So I'm going to take my paper and lay it down. And let's get into the stencil pack. And I'm just going to pull out all of these big stencils. All of these large ones. And I'm going to make a big sandwich. So I just take and place the stencil right on top. I use my solution and just start spraying. Now there might be some dye. You can see there's some distress ink or something like that on this one. I don't worry about it. Um, it'll dissolve. It will become part of the process. You can see it's kind of see it's lifting already. There's no reason to clean your stencils before doing this. You're going to get some cool stuff, cool effects from that. So this looks like it's going to be fairly light. So we're starting off with some pretty light dyed paper. And I'm just going to lay this right on top. And this actually gives kind of a reverse effect. So you'll get like a negative of the stencil. And then I'm going to put the next stencil on. This one has some gold paint on it. I don't know if that'll react the same way as the distress ink, but we'll find out. Just liberally spray that and put a piece of paper on top. And I just repeat this until I've used all my stencils. When I get to the top of the stack, I'm just going to place my last stencil and a spritz. You can decide, oh, running out of coffee, you can decide if you want to put another piece of paper on top of that. If you do, then the back side of it won't have anything on it. You could um, drip or splatter some coffee onto the top page as well. So it's stenciled on one side. It's really up to you. I'm going to let this all soak into the paper for about five minutes. I've also preheated my oven to 275. It has a fan, so you might be able to hear that in the background. I'm not sure. <laughs> so let me wait about five minutes and then I'll show you the next step. All right, it's been about five minutes. I'm going to shift these up here just a little bit. And I have a cookie sheet. It's well used cookie sheet. And I'm just going to start pulling the stencils off. I'm setting them to the side on my towel here and I'm going to layer my papers up right on the cookie sheet. I kind of wobble them back and forth <laughs> so to speak. I don't like make them one even stack. I find that they're going to dry just a little better in the oven this way. Now, full disclosure, um, if you're putting paper in the oven, you have to watch it. It is not entirely safe to do if it, you want it to be away from the elements down low enough on the rack so that it's not going to touch the elements, catch on fire, et cetera, et cetera. If it does catch on fire, turn the oven off, leave the door shut. It should go out. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Um, but practice safe crafting and <laughs> don't do anything crazy. So I am just going to get this all on here. You can see that I've got kind of these stencil shapes. These should be fairly light. The oven may darken them up just a little bit. You can see I got some of that ink from the ink pad. Now the back side of this one doesn't have a lot going on for it because it was on the bottom. That's okay. We can always change that later. But there is my stack of papers and I'm going to tuck this into the oven. How long it takes really just depends on how wet your paper is. This bottom one might not take very long but the others will take quite a while, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Just keep an eye on them, keep checking them, and don't let them catch on fire. <laughs> Do not leave. <laughs> All right, so I've got my papers out of the oven, and you can see that they're kind of warped and fluffy right now, so I'm going to iron these down. They came out great, all the different stencil patterns. I actually had twice as many stencils in that package as I thought I did, so I grabbed those. There was one that had some pink on it that came out super cool. So I'm going to iron these. I'm just using a regular iron. I have it set somewhere between um, silk and wool. <laughs> it's an arbitrary setting. I stay away from the steam setting just in case there is some water left over inside of my iron because then it'll come out and make my paper wet and nobody wants that. So I just get it as hot as I can without hitting that steam setting. Put a towel down to protect my surface and iron these out and it makes them a lot flatter. I don't worry about perfection, but 
I just want them to be flattened out. So I'm going to go through and do all of these and then I'll flip through and find the best ones to show you. All right, so everything's ironed. I ironed both sides of all my pages. You can see they're a lot flatter. They are not perfectly flat and that's okay. I like the feel of them in my journal. I like that different texture that they bring other than like a crisp paper. I use a lot of digitals and having that difference in feel is really important to me. I'm going to go ahead and flip through these pages so that you can see all of them kind of while I talk. Um, so I've done a lot of pages today. My husband convinced me that I should be selling some of the journals that I make. So this is in preparation for some journals that I'm going to sell. I'm opening a different shop to do that in separate from my digital shop. I am going to continue to make and sell digitals. And that's my primary focus. But if I'm already making journals for you all to see with the digitals, I might as well be making them to sell. So I'm going to um, take a stab at that and see how it goes. I will definitely be filming the process of creating those journals and then flip throughs of them whenever they go live in the new shop, along with links where they would be available for purchase. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you're going to take a try at making your own stencil, stenciled coffee dyed papers. I think these really add a lot of texture and a little bit of a different feel compared to just the coffee dyed papers, which I still love. You could definitely do this with food coloring in your water to get different colors. You could try adding ink to your stencils intentionally before coffee dyeing them. You can spray inks or food coloring or whatever you want over them after they're done. There's just so many options and so many different directions you could go with that. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.